Here we are, the season three finale. Season just flew by. Episode ten, the battle of concepts. Very apt title. That's been made explicitly clear. And we're just one point away, right? I know Anata's hitting it. That was the cliffhanger. Yeah, I'm so curious why I did that. I think it's for the, the attack formation. I wonder if Kagama's position has something to do with trying to allow Hanada to hit it in a certain direction. Back attack. So he broke his neck for that look. That looked like it's going straight down. Oh, you son of a... <laughs> Ushiwaka, not letting it go. Another face block? Damn, Tanaka coming out of nowhere. Guy's a demon. Damn, speaking of future thought and systemic planning, even with this, I'm still terrified of Ushiwaka. He's been set up that well. Yeah. He's that good. He's that guy. What a shot. <laughs> he is amazing. <laughs> this representation of their struggle against Ushiwaka feels so accurate. <laughs> so great. Significant that it's all of them as a team lifting up one person, fighting off one giant. My god, it's just one point! <laughs> this is the 360. Let's go to Hinata, right? Oh, this is gonna be it. Oh, they won. They won. The crows showed up. A lot of crows against one eagle. We were driving this home. That looked good. It's, it's oh oh it's go it's gone it's gone home run. There's no one. There's no one there. No, your whole life was a lie. Your philosophy was wrong. Deal with it. Hopefully, you can actually reflect and learn from this. That it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It happened. That's it. That's the game. I was so excited I missed the quote. Can't believe my eyes. <laughs> oh my god, all this waiting for this. Finally, the seniors leave with a win. They did the impossible, for real. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Have your moment. <laughs> they can't even. Yeah, it's all been bottled up. They've been just fighting, just using sheer willpower. Oh, the three seniors, too. Man, they believe from the beginning. Give us a minute. Give us a minute. Oh, come on. Come on, give more than that. Don't just walk away. Turn around. <laughs> he's, just, he's just fixated on this. Oh, no. Ooh, a little weird omen there. He's grown a lot. That's just ハードロ。クロスにと I mean, you can make an argument for a lot of them being MVPs, but I mean, there's a very strong argument in Suki's favor. Just getting an Ushiwaka's head like that, mitigating their greatest weapon. Thank you for coming to our game. Totally worth it. If Tanaka can't get a girlfriend out of this. <laughs> oh, he's got the victory charm. That's so cool. 
I just want to stop here and take the time to give my most sincere thank you to everyone who's been watching the series because I made it to this point without knowing the outcome. For all I've talked about, like, oh, I hope the seniors get a win. I hope the seniors get a win. I really didn't know. The only time I really had an inkling one way or the other was the previous episode when it became concretely clear to me what they were going for with the concepts and the strength of the, the team, the process-based thinking, even though it's kind of portrayed here as being wild, and then the music and the way the, the last episode ended. Until then, I really was in suspense. No one spoiled it for me, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. It added tremendously to my experience of the season, to all three seasons, actually. What I absolutely adore about the way they've done this is it's dangerous. It's hard to get around this problem if you're writing for characters who need a victory, especially in a sports anime, let's say, where loss never feels good good, but then you're in danger of making the main characters win simply to avoid that or simply to just give like a hit of dopamine like we won. What this show has done so well is that it's tied to something bigger than just they win because they're the protagonists. They win because of their philosophy and it's philosophy that I feel is correct and is applicable to so much more than just volleyball or sports. There are so many lessons in it from being able to let go a little bit, being able to lose or go backwards on the surface in order to build a stronger foundation. The discipline and patience and faith that it takes to build piece by piece with the belief, only the belief, that you will win and the drive to make it happen. The versatility, the adaptability, the spirit, never giving up, and doing more than people expect of you, more than someone believe is possible in the case of Hinata and the coach, not letting fear be an obstacle, going for your max potential, living in that, I can't remember the term for it, but it's something like the optimal point of growth is a little bit past your comfort, too far out and you're drowning, but just far out enough and your body, your instincts, your mind is pushing itself to close that gap and raise yourself up a level higher, showing perseverance in the face of defeat. Takeda's speech at the end of season one comes to mind. Not taking that really tempting route of expecting failure and therefore orienting yourself towards it in order to escape from both responsibility of having to do the work you know you could do and the pain, the useful pain in many cases, of giving it your all and not succeeding because of what that will do for you if you use it, like Karasuno did. Having the humility to learn from your opponents or enemies, and also from each other, allowing yourself to be stripped away. Also finding joy in development rather than victory. I think that's especially the case for the three seniors who were on the team when they were no one. People were leaving the team left and right. They had no coach. What kept them there? It was just the raw love of development and, and the vision that something could be better. As a side note, I really love the dynamic between the third years and the first years. The third years set the foundation I made it possible for Hinata and Kageyama and Suki to show up and be this good. But it's a circle because the third years also gained tremendous inspiration from the first years. They breathed new life into them. It ended up being this really amazing synergy between all of them. You put all those things together and you have them able to do the impossible, which feels real to me and well earned. I want to see some kind of interaction between Ushiwaka and Hinata and Kagama to bring that full circle. It feels less bad for me to see them lose too because they've just had so many championships already, you know, they've tasted it. They've got them on their belt. It doesn't feel as bad as say watching, you know, Oikawa lose. For that matter, it's also really admirable that they continue this hunger that they had for winning. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt though. <laughs> it's like their first time tasting loss. They even lost a game. Coach has a real opportunity here. I think a lot of people in this situ situation would just be hateful and double down on their spite. Coach has a chance for growth, although we may not see it. Yeah, this speech is so key. And like all of Daichi's speeches. <laughs> I like how he's choosing the order. Daichi, cornerstone. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Like I said, you can make the case for, I think, so many of them, but Suki's a solid choice. He really did shift the outcome of the game in a very, very potent and noticeable way. He just wanted to attack Hinata. Speaking of existential threats, Hinata represented one for him as well. They're an interesting pair, these two. <laughs> it seems like Ushiwaka really likes them. Yeah, he was cool. He's the man. There we go. He couldn't, yeah, he couldn't leave this stone unturned. Too important. <laughs> what a goal. High praise for Oikawa. He still puts him on a pedestal, despite being champion. Oh yeah, give me the awards. Give them to me. I feel like this is just shock. This is just shock. Tell him. It's a long time coming. 
全国全国の前に表彰式 It's both a really cool moment and relatable for Suki. Obviously, it's just continuing this thing of him actually caring, which is foreshadowed during the training practices of them talking about how he'll find his moment. Well, he definitely had one. He had many. The other, and I don't know if this is exactly what they're going for, but just the way I'm relating to it. When I enter into something that's really contentious, that is difficult, and where the outcome is very unclear and not guaranteed at all, in fact, maybe it's very low chance, there's a little bit of like a guilt that comes with success or worry. You go into this zone of what ifs. There's a certain amount of chance that will go into it, into these kinds of things. And you don't necessarily know how How much was you and how much was the circumstances the chance you think it could have gone the other way easily could have totally failed and it's difficult to process that and because you can't wrap your mind around that completely it's a little bit scary because it maybe limits your ability to model the future based on what you've learned or based on what you've experienced i understand intuitively that feeling of like winning and still being very critical self-critical <laughs> there you go Jojo. Oh yeah, give me the medals, team captain out front. Get to stay on the court. That was always the goal. One more. The word flightless crows. Was never uttered again. <laughs> Back in the same shop, too, right? This is where they cried into their food. Feels different now. It's more work for them. On the nationals. Missed out. Oh, we're going to Tokyo. We can actually see the real Tokyo Tower this time, not just, you know, a telephone pole. They have no idea how like, critical he was. Gee, what do you think? Will she be a fan of volleyball after this? After her, her first year? Oh, that's really exciting. Yeah, that actually was a lot into perspective. Still looking forward and upwards, literally. I wonder, like, where does it go from here? Do we just go to nationals? Is that what it's gonna cover? That training camp ended up being a who's who of high school volleyball. Oh, nice. They're raising money. Oh, they're all pitching in. Yeah, I forgot he has a normal job. <laughs> Must be exhausted. Great poster. Hi. Hi. Damn, Tanaka's got hops. I wonder which one of them can dunk. Close. They have devices for this, for measuring jump, but yeah, they're kind of cash strapped. Oh, you know he can get up there. I bet he can dunk. He just win? Oh yeah, he could definitely dunk. It's amazing. Hit us with the new sensei. Is that onboarding for like pro career? Well, not sure what that means, but obviously a big deal and a testament to his growth and feels well-deserved. How far we've come from season one, episode one. Wonder what his teammates would think now. I think it makes it even more clear to me. I'm doubling down on my somewhat controversial idea that Kagama wasn't in the wrong. I mean, he was until you stretch it out and see that it was just a, a part of his development and it came from a place of passion and drive. It was the flip side or the negative side of a positive trait. And because he had the correct orientation and the right goals, he was able to learn and grow and work through that. And I mean, the result is a championship. Where are his former teammates championships, I wonder? The ones that wouldn't go for the ball when he <laughs> served it to them. I'm pretty blown away. I'm just kind of sitting here stunned. I think I mostly gave my thesis on this season and the show as a whole last episode. To summarize a bit, what blows me away about this show is how each each element of it, each facet of their development, each experience they go through is so pivotal to the whole. And also the idea that their winning does not feel weak in the way a lot of 
sports shows or movies do where it's just you know from early on that the protagonist is going to win and you just kind of strap yourselves in and wait for it. Carson didn't win because they're the protagonists. They won because they earned it and the values and underlying principles that went into it make it satisfying and real. The writer or writers knew what they were doing and I think they got it right. Their humility, their ability to grow, their ability to be patient, lay the groundwork brick by brick towards a unified vision feels real. And that's not to undermine or eliminate the importance of talent. Talent obviously is very useful. I mean they're very talented. Kagam is kind of an ace. And and belief and fundamentals and hard work is not necessarily a guarantee of victory, but it does give you the best chance given what you already are and what you have. I think one of the big challenges of life goes back to the, the serenity prayer, right? It's like to not focus so much on the things you have no control over and absolutely crush it and maximize the things, the areas in which you do have some some control, some input in your own life and not let the other things be an obstacle to that. Nothing is guaranteed, no victory is guaranteed, but that gives you the optimal chance of success. And then you think, you know, from a story perspective, <laughs> This is not like the world championship of volleyball. It's their high school division in their region of Japan. Who knows how they'll do in nationals. There will be a lot of other teams that are hardworking and disciplined and have a vision and are talented naturally. But they got this win. No one can ever take this away from them, ever, for the rest of their lives. And that win is largely symbolic of something more important and bigger that they'll take away for the rest of their lives, which is their growth and what they've learned and who they've become as people. And that's the real glue of Haikyuu for me, is who they are. Another thing I'm impressed with, as I mentioned before, is how each character is absolutely essential. It's not just the Hinata show or Kagama as the two kind of parallel protagonists. He scores the final points because that closes some circles, right? It brings the Ushiwaka thing to a conclusion that, that challenged way back in the beginning of season two. But I give the show a lot of credit actually for not really having any particular spotlight. All of them shine. Uh, there are large sections of these two seasons where Hinata's kind of just playing a role, not really being the, the, the focus. I mean, if you had to make a case for anyone being the lead of this season, I might give it to Suki. Daishi would also be a contender. On that note, it's really cool how they were self-aware about how Tanaka is the silent MVP of his own, you know? He's always there. Doesn't really get a lot of, like, grandeur, but man, talk about consistency, crushing it point after point, bringing that energy. I, it's all of them. Nishinoya too. I, I can't even single out anyone. That's my point. Even trying to do that, I'm failing. All of them get this huge chance to breathe, and it makes the victory all that, that more special. Very curious to see what happens in season four. I mean, nationals? For me, this feels like the end. This feels like the culmination, just in terms of what's been built. There are no previews of the future. Although that's not true. There's Night in the Coma and all the teams they face in training camp. There's potential. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Either way, as long as it brings the same character heart, the same morality, same principles, it's going to be great. Thank you guys for watching. And again, for not spoiling anything. It means a lot to me. And I'll see you guys for season four.